Welcome to St. Aidan's. Uh, those of you who are here in the pews, I'm sorry, I need to take this off. Those of you who are in the pews and those of you who are at home joining us uh, on uh, live. We're going to begin today as this uh, week, of course, on Wednesday is Remembrance Day. We're going to begin our service today with an act of remembrance, which will include the singing of the national anthem uh, by David. The rest of us will listen. Uh, and followed by a minute of silence concluded with the reading of in Flanders Fields. So I would ask that uh, as you were able, that you would stand now for our national anthem. In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Just take note that um, Kevin is going to take the day off today to have some rest. Kevin has been working 200%, and so it's uh, kind of glad that we can wish for him some rest and relaxation today and some refreshment as he continues this work. We continue our service according to the bulletin.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Creator, you made all people of every land. It is our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land. We are all. This is the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenni Powak, and Attawandaran peoples. These lands are connected with the London Township and Songer Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. This land continues to be home to diverse Indigenous peoples whom we recognize as contemporary stewards of the land and vital contributors of our society. We are thankful for the gifts of the people of the land. We offer our respect to those ancestors who may be interred here. Creator, let us be of good mind to reconcile to the mistreatment of this land and to those who have been displaced. With thankful and respectful hearts, we pray in your name, your Son, the Peacemaker, and the Sacred Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the proclamation of the Lord. A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors, ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us Brought us, brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went, and among all peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in this land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God, and he will not forgive you your trans transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm, and consume you after having done your good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He 
he said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made the statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Philosophy 
quality cannot be the same after Auschwitz and Hiroshima. Certain assumptions about humanity have proved to be spacious, have been smashed. What has long been regarded as commonplace has proved to be utopianism. This human race that has been called and nurtured in biblical imagery towards that place in its primal memory it recalls as paradise seems instead more capable of producing the fire and brimstone of hell. Joshua knows that he stands with the people of Israel at a pivotal moment. They have, in their history as a people, never been so close to feeling the fulfillment of God's promises to bring them to that place where they will be able to live in the fullness of everything God has wanted for them. Peace and justice and fruitful harmony. It is a place of choice. And Joshua lays that choice out before the people as their leader, not just once, but three times. Do you serve the God who has brought you here to this place, or do you serve the gods of the former places? And each time the people respond, of course we will serve the Lord. But the repetition of the question suggests that there may be some doubt about the depth of the people's certainty. There seems to be little more constant in the human story than the vacillation between gods according to expediency. Look at the world of our own memories. How much rhetoric we hear and how our choices belie the rhetoric. We hear, for example, the bemoaning of the disappearance of the Lord's Prayer and Ten Commandments as benchmarks of our society. And many of those same bemoaning individuals live in animosity with and threaten violence against the very people whom God has given them as family or as community. The testimony of human fickleness in its relationship with God covers the coastal areas of Europe and field upon field of grave markers over the remains of the youth of the nations of the world from all sides of the conflict. It fills the hostels of the homeless and the abused and the food banks of developed nations. It can be found in the eyes of the suffering and developing nations who are blocked often by commercial interest and consumer greed in the developed world from access to food and health resources that the rest of the world takes as its right. Joshua's question is intentionally persistent and poignant. Whom will you serve? Whom will you serve? For Jesus, the question is reformed in images of the reign of God. Do we know how close it is to us? How immediate? Even knowing that they have already been included in the bridegroom's feast, five of the bridegroom, bridesmaids, pardon me, 50%, five of the bridesmaids come with no oil for their lamps. Perhaps assuming that they will not need their lamps anytime soon, or as it turns out, the provisions will come from some other source than themselves. When the door of the feast is opened, they're off somewhere else and deprive themselves of the opportunity to be a part of the bank. How foolish, indeed. How much time is spent by humanity worrying about the details of the reign of God? What does it look like? Where is it? And who will get in? We fail to see that the invitation is here. It's around us. It's upon us. It is here in the choice between justice and injustice. Between violence and peace. This week 
on November the 11th, we are all asked to stand before the testimony of the broken. The vacillation of humanity between its gods. And we will not be looking out on the reign of God. Instead, we will look over horror and tragedy and tears and loss. And surely we must be conscious that we have been watching the same effects unfold all through this week and not very far away. The veterans of the world's conflicts and those who have been thrown through them know and we, the subsequent generations, must remember the foolishness of missing the immediacy of the reign of God. How we miss the opportunity. Instead of God's reign, hell breaks loose as one part of humanity pulls all others into the morass of conflict. How do these things happen? The grave markers of Normandy. Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, the unnecessary victims of COVID-19, the acts of individual and state-sanctioned terrorism that continues to snuff out productive, innocent lives. Choose this day whom you will serve and keep awake. We can, through many factors like politics and the hubris of self, lose touch with the wonderful invitation that is extended to us and made possible for us by the one we call Christ, our Savior. But we are called again to the banquet today to make the choice Choose God. Be ready to walk in God's reign always. Not for the sake of being right or on the right side and for self-satisfaction, but for the sake of humanity, for the sake of the world, beloved of its creator. In a world where it seems there are many, many still, for whom People dying means little as long as it isn't them. Where many still believe it appropriate to act with violence as a means to get their way. Where ignorance and meanness and self-interest is equated by many with power and success. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, O God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. I invite you now into the position and attitude of prayer as we offer our prayers for the world and one another. And the format for these prayers is included in the bullet. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God.
for all of who claim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Paul of our bishop, for Kevin our parish priest, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church, for our own needs and those of others, I invite you if you have petitions of your heart that you name them aloud if you wish, or simply hold them in the silence of this time. remember those people now caught in violent situations around the world, the leaders of nations, they may seek for justice and for peace. In particular, we pray for the people of the United States of America. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Give thanks for this day, this taste of summer in the middle of November, for life in this country, for the harvest we enjoy. freedom to gather in worship. We will exalt you, O God our King, and we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially this week remembering the victims of the world's conflicts in the ages. And for those whose faith is known to you alone, they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let her loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we're able and reminding ourselves that our gesture of peace to one another is, is visual, and not physical. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
invite you to stand now as we continue the celebration of the Eucharist. Gracious God, your word to us is food indeed. Receive all we offer you this day, and let your loving kindness be our comfort. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our living word. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Now, as our Savior has taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Reminder that I will bring the bread around to you individually. You would leave your mask on until I come with the bread. And then after I pass by, you move your mask to consume and then feel free to be seated while the community continues.
Let us pray. Living God, in the Eucharist you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us and bring us to the joy you promise. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we depart today, I just draw your attention to any of the announcements that are in the bulletin. I don't think I have anything more to say than, than is in there. The usual online uh, opportunities are available, as well as uh, our service on uh, Wednesday evening and Friday, you know, hmm? Friday morning. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay, that's coming. Stay tuned for that. Thank you for being with us today, and uh, I hope that you will join us again. And I invite you to stand for the concluding blessing. Have peace with one another. As children of one mother, let each defer to other, and may your hearts be one. Have peace with all around you. Sweet love of earth surround you, and may no harm confound you or break the peace with have peace with God, your Maker, in Jesus, be partaker and spirit consecrated. God, three in one, grant peace. The peace of God possess you. The love of God caress you. The grace of heaven bless you. Peace everlasting. Amen. And well into the world to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.